Здравейте и добре дошли в нашето ново шоу Вдъхновени разговори Inspire Talks. Днес ще бъдете отново с мен и моята колежка Лидия. А в следващите няколко минути ще говорим за интересна тема с нашият гостин. А и нашата тема за днес ще бъде а, хичхайкинг или пътуване с автостоп. Лидия, дали си пътувала с автостоп? Не, не съм и мислам, че никой път няма да пътувам с автостоп, и аз мисля, това е малко така по-опасно. Опасно, и аз мислям, че е опасно и а, не би се решила да пътвам с автостоп. И аз мисля, че не, mm-hmm. да видим какво ще казва нашия гост. Хело, uh, Филипе! And thank you for accepting our invitation to be our guest in the studio. How are you today? I'm doing well, thanks. How do you like our studio? It's beautiful. It's amazing. You like it? Yeah, I love it. Uh, can you present yourself and tell us more about you? Where are you from? Okay, so um, my name is Felipe and I'm from Chile. And I guess the most important thing I've been doing is just traveling by autostop and doing sports in the meantime in Europe. Uh, how and why um, did you come to Bulgaria? Well, how? I just biked like half of the way from, from Switzerland to Venice and then I hitchhiked uh, well to Serbia and then I biked the rest of the way. And why? I really have no reason. I just I was following my friends who are traveling on a tandem bicycle, like a double bicycle, and uh, they wanted to come here so I came and now I love it. Uh, now tell me, how do you become a hitchhiker? Um, it's just something that was kind of practical when I was young. Um, we used to have a, a house on the beach and we, uh, it just made sense to go surfing uh, by hitchhiking because sometimes I wanted to surf in a beach that's like 10 kilometers away and walking doesn't really work. So then I started and then in Chile it's pretty normal to hitchhike uh, for a summer after, after like uh, when vacation comes and stuff like this. So then I just loved it and kept doing it. <laughs> Is like a tradition to hitchhiking in your country? Not a tradition, but a lot of people do it. Like you can go to Patagonia, mm-hmm. uh, which is for me, it's the most beautiful place in the world. Uh, you can go there and there's a road that's called the Austral Path or the Austral Highway. It's like 1,400 kilometers and it's super nice to hitchhike. And sometimes you go in one spot of this road and you see other 20 hitchhikers, like in the same spot. In and the same have, spot. Yeah, oh, and you so have to nice. wait sometimes eight hours or something mm-hmm. like that. So. so do you remember your first uh, hitchhiking trip? Uh, like big trip, yeah, it was in Patagonia. Mm-hmm. But, the, but that was, I think, with my girlfriend. And then I did one by myself where I hitchhiked from like uh, Patagonia to the United States. So it was like three months of just hitchhiking. For how long? Uh, I started maybe the first time was when I was 14 or 15. Just to go You're surfing. Very young. <laughs> yeah. So how you decide to start to hitchhiking in Europe? Well, uh, my first time in Europe, I did a bike trip through Germany and Switzerland, and then I realized that Europe is pretty nice, and I wanted to come back for three years and I had to learn three languages. So that's what I came here for, mm-hmm. and now it's been two years, and one and a half languages are done, and I just need to learn more and yeah. Oh, more. so you're learning languages when you're uh, hitchhiking, also? Yeah, exactly. That's that's why I hitchhike. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, I mean, I love it just because, but it's really nice that I can sit in a car with someone and just learn the language. Mm-hmm. And how many languages uh, you learn? Like, um, well, on this trip I learned German pretty well, uh, French also, and some Italian. Oh, I guess nice. some Polish too. Oh. But, but my only goals are um, German, French and Italian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So nice. Um, uh, we know that you come here in Bulgaria, in Sliven, mm-hmm. with bicycle. Mm-hmm. Do you prefer hitchhiking or bicycle? <laughs> I prefer hitchhiking because um, I get to have more interactions with people, especially mm-hmm. with locals and it's more spontaneous like sometimes i'm hitchhiking going from let's say france to norway and then someone says hey there is a party in the southern part of italy and i said yeah let's go to the party and i i I don't go to norway and change all my plans and that just fits my personality so hitchhiking is the best (laughs) during the hitchhiking uh, you met uh, many people and you have many different situations Mm -hmm. can you tell us more about some interesting situation during the hitchhiking. Okay, so maybe something that's not like expected, it's that I've been picked up by a Ferrari, mm-hmm. uh, one time in Austria, mm-hmm. also by two Bentleys, 
um, in um, also one in, was in Austria and the other one in Czech Republic. And one story, story that I like is that just one time I was going to like from Barcelona to, to Italy, but in the end I got a ride with someone who was going to party in the Netherlands. So I just changed my whole plans and ended up going to the Netherlands. I had a great party in Unex Maastricht. Unexpected journey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I like. So, uh, Which countries have you visited to be hitchhiking? Um, like, should I list all of them? Mm, some <laughs> so countries. If you, if, if you make a line from, like, in, in, in the America, the continent, if mm -hmm. you make a line from, like, from Chile, following the coast to Canada, I've been in all of these countries. So, like, Chile, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Port, oh my Port, God. Uh, Costa Rica, <laughs> a Mexico. lot of A lot of countries. Yeah, and in Europe, uh, most of the countries in Europe, except for maybe um, Hungary, three countries in Scandinavia, and also, like, Greece and stuff, yeah. But most of Europe. Do you have a favorite country? Uh, Switzerland, Switzerland is my favorite country. Yeah, I like, I'm from Chile. In Chile we have a lot of mountains. And Switzerland is kind of like being at home, but it's more interesting because of the language. The language is really nice there. I never uh, visit Switzerland, but I'm not sure. It's, it's really nice, yeah. Yes, but it's my wish. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, people are nice. And the language, like I said, they don't speak normal German. They speak Swiss German. It's uh, beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Um, can you tell me if I, if I want to go in a trip by hitchhiking, mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me some good tips to save hitchhiking, uh, okay. for example, equipment, necessities, clothes and other stuffs? Yeah, like, um, so when I started traveling I had everything with me, I had a tent, I had a rain jacket, I have a stove to cook. But now I have almost like just a sleeping bag because um, I don't want to carry more stuff in my backpack. Mm -hmm. So I would say sleeping bag is one of the most important things. Yeah, sleeping bag. Um, and I, when I traveled before in like in more dangerous countries, I had a knife and pepper spray. Of course, of course. And uh, but uh, I never really, I, yes. I never really had to use it or anything like this. But if you're a girl traveling by herself you should just kind of follow your instinct. For girls, maybe it's more yeah. dangerous. dangerous. Yeah, exactly. And you should and just yes. you like follow your instinct. If someone's looking at you in a creepy way, you yeah. better say like, yes, no. I think the instinct is uh, very uh, important, important is uh, hitchhiking, yes. Mm -hmm. And for that, I... Because for women, I think it's very dangerous, the yeah. more dangerous than men's. And yeah. I think uh, I've never decided to do yeah, in, right. uh, in the yeah, beginning yeah. Uh, yes. we said in Bulgarian that uh, we never yes. had hitchhiking because I think that it's dangerous for yes. a girl or even if it will be uh, two girls or three yes. girls, I yeah. think also that is dangerous. But I, I will never decide to hitchhike. But I think <laughs> the best is um, if you find a couple, like just a, a male friend that can go with you. And that's that's the best. If you're afraid, then you just take a man that can come with you, and you just go on a yes, trip yes. together. That's I think that's the best way. Two and more people, yes. Yeah, exactly. That's good. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, hitchhiking is more easier, um, but woman or for men? Uh, it's definitely easier for women. Uh, Why? <laughs> in the way of getting picked up, because a man will never be afraid of a woman, mm -hmm. right? So let's say half of the people who are driving are men. They're not going to be afraid of a woman, and girls are also not going to be afraid of other girls. Um, so in that way it's easier, but it's also harder in the way that it's more dangerous for a girl, because uh, they're not as strong or they're, they're not so used to defending themselves like, like women are. So mm -hmm. just for most of the things it's easier, for other stuff it's just harder. Uh, tell me, uh, uh, what do you think uh, people uh, still prefer to... Uh, this kind of transportation, um, like like in the past. Yeah. And why? In the past, is it used to be much um, like much more normal to mm -hmm. go everywhere with hitchhiking, uh, but I think now the media has a, a big um, big influence in this because now, for example, if you read, let's say um, three years ago, two traveler girls died in Ecuador. If you read this, being in Russia, you say, oh my God, two girls died in Ecuador and they were hitchhiking. Yes, yes. And you get really scared. So yeah. you say, I will never hitchhike. Yes, but um, if you just get rid of all the media, 
then you you realize no one that yes. none of your friends died of hitchhiking yes. none of your the people you know none of your relatives so if you take this out it's pretty safe you only uh need good vibes <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. and i've hitchhiked like yeah. a lot and uh most of the all of the experiences yes. maybe except for one or two have been really great and i've had like also many that have been amazing so yeah um yesterday when we meet you and we start to speak about your trip, about your hitchhiking. You told me one interesting information that you remember how many cars you changed yeah. in your trip. <laughs> yeah, I've been, okay. in, I've been in 912 cars. I oh like to God. count them all the time. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So how is it possible to remember all these cars, numbers and everything? Oh, I just, I just keep adding the numbers in my head and every time I close a new day, I just say, okay, today is, um, let's say, 465. And when I talk to the people, I try to mention it. So I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? Yeah, you're my car number 465. And then I remember also. And then oh. when I finish the day, sometimes I forget the same day, but I remember the day from before. And then I just have to add all the cars from that day. You know, so mm -hmm. yeah. So you didn't write somewhere down. Um, you just remember. Yeah, exactly. And it's all about the memory. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And you for example, I I remember someone who gave me a ride like a year ago, and she was three hundred and twelve, and we're st we're still friends. But sometimes I'm like, hey, three twelve, what's up? <laughs> so yeah. So you prefer to hitchhiking alone or with company? Um, I like alone. I, I like travel. In general, traveling alone is the best way for me. That's that's the best way there is. Uh, it's not easy for um, for everybody. Uh, I can say I'm. I feel pretty strong. Like as being alone and stuff. If I have problems, I can always sort it out by myself. But other people, they need more support from other friends and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but alone is the best because you, you can be more spontaneous. You don't have to worry about where to eat yes. or like making decisions as a group. For others, yes. As yeah, a group. it's really stressful for me. So mm -hmm. alone is better. Can you share with us uh, some interesting uh, story about your hitchhiking and one dangerous story what happened? Like just good or bad or just good or bad? Both. both. You both. <laughs> um, I don't know. I have like one time I was I was trying to hitchhike in France, like going from Switzerland south uh, through the like Autoroute du Soleil. It goes south and then to Barcelona, and I was going there and I just met some people randomly uh, in a kebab place, like to eat, and they said, "Hey, uh, we are going two hours to the north, so the opposite direction as me." Uh, and they were like, yeah, you should go and stay with us and uh, we, give, we give you something to eat, something to drink, we'll have a good time. And I'm like, oh God, I don't want to. But in the end I went mm -hmm. and, and it was amazing. We, we, spent, we had a good party yes. and the next day I left. And when I was leaving, I hitchhiked like the second car that gave me a ride. It said the same thing. Yes. Like, um, hey, you should stay at my place. And I'm like, oh God, I'll stay okay, I'll stay at your place. Oh so God. that's nice that people yes. are so open. Hitchhiking is very interesting because you met uh, uh, so many people. Mm -hmm. I don't know, some different situation. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, yes. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's, it's super nice. And people like... I think hitchhiking is a good way of filtering people because if you don't want to be with um, like bad people or boring people or close-minded people, uh, it's easy because if you show your finger, those people will never stop. They yeah. will always keep going. Yeah, and yeah. the people who stop are only the... Open-minded. Exactly, open-minded open -minded. and travelers. Yeah, yes, so it's, travelers. it's good. Who I can like understand. You know. Good people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that now is... Uh, Time to say some bad, <laughs> some bad story. Stuff. Yeah, okay. some bad stuff. What happened to you in this um, trip? Not much, really. I mean, some of the bad stuff that has happened is mainly because of um, just problems in communication. Mm -hmm. So um, I've I've gotten rides uh, who have dropped me off in the middle of like the the highway, where it's illegal to hitchhike, of course. And so I'm stop. I'm stuck in the middle of the highway, and then I'm like, "Oh crap! What do I do now?" <laughs> so I try to hitchhike, but of course no one stops. Yes. But then the police car comes, and uh, and they give me a ride to somewhere else after checking my passport and my ID and my money and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I also forgot. I've been in like 17 police cars in this trip. <laughs> so <laughs> 17 police. Yeah. 
because they pick me up sometimes and they drop me off somewhere else. And normally they are super nice, yeah. You're hitchhiking with police also. Yeah, it works, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's so funny. Um, I knew that uh, in some countries hitchhiking is illegal. What about your country? Uh, no, in my country it's totally legal. Yeah. And I think um, I have this conversation with a lot of people. A lot of people think that hitchhiking is illegal, but actually hitchhiking is only illegal in the highway, normally. Um, the same, and it's not illegal because of hitchhiking, it's illegal because you can't, you can't stand on the highway, right? Because cars go too fast and they, uh, and it's dangerous, yeah, it's right? very dangerous. But you can always go from like gas station to gas station or stand in the entrance to the highway, like on the on-ramp, uh, and, and there it's, it's totally legal, yes. yeah. But in my country, it's legal to do it on the highway too. So it's, it's easy. Sometimes you just go like this in the middle of the highway. And uh, like before this trip, I just felt like I was trapped in my hometown. And I went hitchhiking and I like 10 hours later, I was like 1,200 kilometers south. And um, I was just in the south in Patagonia and it was great. So <laughs> it's good. So honestly, I wish you good luck and... Mm, Uh, to have only uh, good memories, to yeah. meet uh, only good people and good situations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I think you will be like that. Yeah. You thank know. you, Felipe. Thank you for being our guest in the show. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so our much. Honor. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Yeah, for me too. So thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you. I hope thank that you so uh, you'll see you again here in Bulgaria in Sweden yeah, for... and we can uh, record other TV shows. For sure. Why not? <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice. So, I thank wish you so good much. luck. Thank you. Thank you so me much. <laughs> Здравейте, сега се намираме в студиото на Радио Еволюшен. Тук с нас са доброволците от Латвия, Италия и Грузия. Сега ще видим как минава един работен ден тук в студиото. Guys, can you present yourself and tell us where are you from? Uh, hello, I am Goga. I am 22 years old uh, and uh, I am from Georgia. I am making my EVS uh, here in Bulgaria, in Sliven. Hello, I am Sergei. I am 27 years old. I am from Lete and I am here in Sliven of my EVS project and I am working in Red Evolution. Hello, my name is Gianluca. I am uh, 22 years old and uh, I am from Italy. Uh, I'm here in Sliven, uh, uh, just arrived since so two days, and uh, I'm here for uh, work uh, in uh, this project, AVS project, uh, uh, Radio Evolution. Uh, so guys, uh, I have one question. How and why you decide to come here in Bulgaria and doing your EVS? Uh, the main reason why I decided to come in Bulgaria was uh, uh, next. Uh, Bulgaria is so close to, from my country and I can go in my country every time. Also, I had experience uh, about radio. I was working uh, more than seven years, and I needed to share my uh, experience uh, in a uh, strange and uh, different country for me. And uh, also, I need to get something new from this project and from Radio Evolution. I want to come to EVS because my colleague advised me to come. And also, I've not uh, been in Bulgaria. It's very interesting for me because Bulgaria has very beautiful nature, also mountains. It's very interesting. And I have experience. Uh, two years I was uh, working by volunteer in sport organization Ghetto Games. And I was being another uh, organization three months when I make uh, some stuff like uh, games, in for, uh, make games from kids uh, to kids, uh, youngsters. Also, I'm working by photographer, make posters, design, so many lot of works. And for me, it's very interesting. I, would, I was motivated to come here and do another things. Also, bring and share skills. And yeah, I want to make dance uh, lessons for youngsters, for kids. I have seven year experience for um, dancing and uh, I want to make flash mob in city garden, for example, or uh, somewhere else. Because dancing is very nice power to attract people to be active. So that's like that. 
I decided to get this experience in uh, Radio Evolution um, because uh, I want to change uh, the plan. Because uh, my study uh, are uh, economic study, but I want to um, uh, learn other types of work. And uh, I hope uh, this experience uh, will be good. And also I decided to come in Bulgaria because uh, I'm uh, really attracted by the Balkan culture. And um, I hope uh, in these months uh, I, I uh, will uh, get a good time. How do you like Bulgarians, Leon? I like Bulgaria. Uh, as I told you, it's so close uh, for my country and also for me. Uh, but um, the life in Sliven was uh, so hard for me uh, at the beginning, in the second month, uh, because Sliven is more peaceful and quiet city for me. Uh, I was living in the capital city of Georgia, and um, here is so many uh, options to uh, something for to do. And now it's better. Mm, I feel like not home, but second home. I very really like uh, Sliven because it's very uh, small and I like small cities uh, because uh, my country I was uh, live in big capital city and I think no but that is so different for me and uh, another people another uh, mentality also and uh, buildings is very interesting and uh, I like uh, to be here also I planning maybe after uh, my project to stay in Sliven, find the work maybe by photographer or by dance teacher and try to 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 live here because I like this Sliven is very beautiful for me and uh, we have so many meetings parties uh, sometimes which vol another volunteers and I want to stay there and uh, continue my work how long you are here I am here five months uh, and I will stay next seven. So I am here for one year. I'm here five months and totally I'm staying there 12 months. So one year. And also time going very fast because I remember the time when I come here and now it's October and uh, start November. So you need to really good motivation. Also, you need to uh, prepare yourself to work because uh, it's time going very fast. You need to know what you can do in this project. Guys, what are you doing here in Radio Evolution? Can you describe your working day, day here? I am doing everything. Uh, also, guys, not just me. Uh, one normal day uh, is starting from uh, 8 a.m. Uh, we need to wake up and um, prepare ourselves and also prepare some topics because uh, well, yeah, we can uh, make some topics uh, before one, one day. But uh, here is uh, news which uh, you need to be fresh and uh, we need to make a uh, news topic uh, in the morning. Uh, yeah, we have uh, some different topics. Uh, it's not so hard, but I think it's uh, interesting for our listeners and uh, for people who is uh, living uh, in Sliven and just not uh, Sliven because as Probably you know we have listeners from around the world. Every morning, uh, working days, we make a morning show where we're talking about some different topics, for example, horoscope about on this day, news, and uh, about travel guide. Before I prepare some uh, topics like horoscope uh, on this day, find information. Uh, also, I will try to share more positive information to not share negative uh, information. Also, before uh, we uh, try to record, uh, before record, we try to configure the audio, how is it okay or not. Also, voice, it's everything is okay. Internet connection, because it's important uh, to record. Also, and we have uh, interviews uh, in weekly show when we uh, discuss about some different topics, for example, about uh, social problems, about uh, education. Yeah, it's very important also in Sliven. And yeah, it's like this. And um, we before discuss, prepare the questions for, uh, for interview. And this is main work we are doing here. Today is uh, my first day and uh, we had a morning show and uh, we had uh, 
we had talk about uh, the news, the weather, and the horoscope. And uh, we we listened to some good music. Can you tell me more about your job here? Is daily or weekly show? We have morning show, but uh, also we have weekly show, of course, uh, which is on uh, Wednesday from 6 to 7 uh, p.m. Uh, I don't know, preparation uh, time is so hard because I don't know uh, how it's for you, but uh, for us it's to, so hard to search guests in Sliven. Uh, so we need to search uh, our guests uh, in other countries or uh, just call by Skype or by Messenger. Um, but actually, uh, we can do it. Uh, so thank you guys to be our guest today in our show. Actually, we are your guest here in studio, but uh, thank you so much. Uh, and I hope that we will uh, see you again in our studio and speak more about your AVS project. Това беше всичко от нас за днес и нашите гости, доброволците от Италия, Грузия и Латвия, които споделиха своя опит с нас. Довиждане!